Hey, all you groovy people out there. It's Zen Jen with your groovy minute this week. I wanted to uh, point out the large bags under my eyes <laughs> and uh, that I've aged quite a bit this week. I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> but I have a lot. And uh, this is my dear friend Jema. Come here, Jema. She's staying with me this week. Hi. Look at her cute purple hair. She has been <laughs> my friend for, gosh, 12 years? I don't know, 12 years? And she's taking care of my kids, uh, the trooper, uh, for about 12 years as well. So she's seen them grow from um, little toddlers into teeny bops, and they're beautiful both ways. Um, I'm trying to get you in. <laughs> I'll just play. I'll be here. You gotta be more to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I mean, we're just very in the moment, you see? Everything I teach is in the moment. So, um, today, I was watching uh, my new caregiver I'm training, uh, Jake, and I was noticing that it's a lot of coaching uh, to keep... Um, the caregiver in the moment and at the same time keep them one step at a time and being very clear and concise with their directions with my kids. Um, that always helps them. <laughs> I got the pillow. <laughs> got the rainbow pillow and it's the favorite. And um, <laughs> and so Jema, who has been coached by me quite a bit, um, and I have also been coached by her. <laughs> because all of us are gurus and we have something to teach um, each one of us. Um, you can see I'm looking at the background and I'm sorry I'm so random but I'm noticing the wall of artwork uh, on the back and I always keep a wall of artwork for my kids uh, in every house we have and it's, um, it's a pretty exciting thing. They just come up with some pretty awesome colorful uh, layered and just incredible artwork as you can see okay so again back to thank you Jamie you're welcome my spokes model <laughs> <laughs> and so as you can see um, this week Jamie was here and uh, we also had our friend Virginia with the first night um, and this was full moon week and it was one of um, Justin's toughest weeks we've had in a long time um, and I I remember thinking when I first started talking to families with small children with autism, and I feel so sad about that, but I feel like I was a trailblazer for nothing sometimes because to see families go through the same crap and torment and um, lack of support uh, from every angle, and not tr trying to be negative, but it, it's true. It's a very isolating life we live. And man, Jameis saw me cry a few times this week. Just, uh, like, I just want to go back to Washington, and I don't even know why. <laughs> because even there, we wouldn't have, you know, um, what we needed. Um, because no one can quite figure out the autistic brain. <laughs> not even me. But, okay, stop crying. Okay, um, <laughs> thanks. Um, so, thank you, Jama, for being here because I needed a lot of support this week. <laughs> I guess that's why I was here this week. It, it turns out it was. <laughs> so, um, what I wanted to say is I always looked at these families um, with the younger kids and I think, holy crap, we went through so much when the kids were little. I mean, really, I was it was a constant, constant state of chaos. Um, both my kids diagnosed on the spectrum, and honestly, it seems like everything's quite mellow yellow around here, but we still experience quite uh, severe extremes, um, from total chill <laughs> to um, scary chaos. Um, so we, um, uh, as I was saying, when the kids were little, I think it, w it seems like it was more uh, tumultuous. Um, 
We never had locks on our doors. Uh, Justin ran away all the time. One time he ran into the woods. Uh, luckily my dog followed him. We lived near the woods, near a huge uh, near capital <laughs> forest. Yeah. It's in Washington state and it's a huge forest and there's cougar and bear and you know pretty much everything that a small child doesn't want to experience um, <laughs> by themselves including you know cold and a lot of forest uh, rainforest but um, we also like I remember one time Jama when she first started with us I had hopped in the shower quickly and Justin I had to keep the shower door open all the time and I was like I have the most keen ears and Justin within three minutes had gone outside to the end of our driveway and Jama drove up and he was at the end of our driveway so if you see families with small children with autism don't assume the worst that they're not paying attention honestly you can't stop watching your kid for one second and same here this week Justin I was in you know cooking something and and I I walk all the time and I'm always talking to him and I he was with me cooking all yeah <laughs> all the time Every and, second. <laughs> and he, he was cooking with me and all of a sudden I mean like really within 30 seconds I hear water pouring he had taken a water bottle that I had just poured in to have some water to drink and poured it all over my living room and I'm like what the <laughs> and it it's just like he constantly has these obsessive compulsive moments where he or and sometimes they're um, defiant like he's just trying to get negative attention and even when he's in the midst of getting good attention <laughs> so uh, it's a tough thing to figure out that autistic brain we have eliminated so many foods throughout uh, our lifetime um, the only thing we haven't fully gotten rid of and we uh, well, two things, uh, obviously, gluten, uh, which we kind of go back and forth, and that doesn't seem to be Justin's trigger. It seems to be when it's combined with things or on its own or white flour. It, you know, because we, I do avoid a lot of gluten because he eats brown rice bread, um, brown rice pasta. So, you know, we don't like to be gluten all the time but we have donuts and cookies at occasionally but I discovered this week that perhaps um, his uh, glucose levels are off and I've always been trying to test we can't get blood from him we've had three nurses and myself while he's locked in his seatbelt try and get blood from just poking his finger and we can't manage it so uh, uh, healthcare professionals out there I've had a lot of times where they've gone oh it's gonna be easy <laughs> <laughs> and it never is, <laughs> and it, yeah, we've traveled far and wide to different um, places to just get uh, brain scans. I tried to get a neurological scan for Justin and the cooperation level and the technical advancement was just mm, not there. Uh, <laughs> They had Justin, who can't sit still or wait, uh, lay down on the table and assumed that he would lay down for three hours of having those um, prods put on his head when there's helmets available in most hospitals, but apparently not in Seattle. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not bitter. Definitely not bitter. <laughs> I'm not dwelling at all. I don't dwell at all. Um, <laughs> private joke, but just to let you know, uh, every single moment is challenging and it has to be well thought out, well planned, and everyone should be listening closely to the parent. The parent knows the formula for their child. And even though they seem like they're lost sometimes because they can't figure it out, they are the best one to know. I mean, hopefully we're giving parents the benefit of the doubt. I know I've had a lot of people approach me in public when Justin was screaming in a grocery store, what do you do to him, you know? <laughs> right. Um, I love him. <laughs> so, um, it, it's just a very challenging life we live. So the more support, the more love, the more acceptance. And I've had here in Massachusetts, which I really appreciated when I first got here, I go swimming a lot in ponds with Justin and Brianna. and. That can be exciting at times. I bring floaties. I, just, I learned to bring floaties because we're all strong swimmers, but 
sometimes Justin wants to go where he wants to go and I have a struggle with him physically in the water um, where I'm trying to overpower him while I'm treading water trying to direct him in the right direction uh, to where we're going ah, and uh, it gets tiring so I bring floaties now um, <laughs> but I've had people surround me when I'm trying to get him out of the water because sometimes it can become a repetitive he'll get it out and then he'll run back in he'll get out and he'll run back in and I'm literally dragging off the seat of his pants because I'm like a rag doll to him because he's so big so um, I've had people walk up and go, help, can I help you? How can we help? Can we help you bring him in? And they don't approach Justin and start assuming the worst of Justin's behavior. They come to me and say, how can I help you? And that was such a relief because I'm already embarrassed. I'm already scared that he's going to hurt himself or, you know, or just not ever come to terms with what I'm asking him to do. And um, it's so nice to have people come up and go, how can I help you? and be very compassionate and we go to order things you know at a, at a place and they're very tolerant of him kind of getting anxious and in line and him having to use his little iPod to say what he wants and or if he signs with them people around here are quite aware of this disability and I, I urge everyone across the country to learn more about autism so you can recognize it and be compassionate rather, judge, rather than judgmental and um, we parents need a huge community uh, of people to help us, including public schools who sometimes really, the teachers try really hard, or some of the therapists, but um, schools are not providing enough for families and they get a lot of res resistance in uh, administrative um, areas. And um, I urge you administrators to get on board and let your people be um, expressive and try new things and use their budgets wisely rather than to fight the parents to help them and um, you'll be the hero and uh, that's that's a much better role than what has been seen in my life <laughs> and um, also just anyone get to know people who are living this adventure go to their house see Jema had to come all the way across the country to see me. And <laughs> I love it when friends come to my house to see me because they know that I don't have the flexibility um, to get out there. And honestly, you think, you know, oh, the state probably provides lots of care for these kids. They don't. I, I get a total of, for Massachusetts, because kids with autism can walk, they don't have usually they don't have um, any kind of physical major physical disability except for like fine motor um, and the laws or the evaluations are set for people with disabilities that you know um, cannot physically care for themselves kids with autism can't physically care for themselves I mean brushing teeth is like a crazy mess uh, up until lately I had to like literally sit on my kids to get them to brush their teeth um, because otherwise they would have nasty teeth <laughs> and they'd scream and Justin when I try and cr uh, brush it or you know shave his head when he was little it was literally like he was being murdered for yeah. a good three hours straight because it yeah. took that long to keep trying and trying even toenails fingernails being clipped a total chaotic screaming mess <laughs> you remember that Jima? yeah <laughs> and I'm like so um, what was my point I was talking about that and uh, Jame is the best person to bring things back to a point <laughs> when I go on tangents actually <laughs> remember that about her in our conversation I'm like nice work you remembered where I was but um I was talking about um, um so they they believe that kids cannot take care of themselves. Oh yeah, okay, so the hours that I get per week. Um, it varies from state to state, it varies on whoever evaluates you, it varies on what the budget's like. Um, and the first things to be cut are care for our kids. And it's on, in fact, uh, the federal government told state governments that if they didn't start, that it wasn't babysitting so they consider watching a kid 24 hours a day like you have to with mine so that they stay safe and they don't run into traffic and they don't burn themselves they you know you know <laughs> there's plenty of stuff that could happen going on i mean my kids minds are constantly you know or that they don't get hurt by a stranger because they don't get it um and um 
Anyway.